So let's do a couple problems together. I'd always encourage you in a situation like this to pause the video um, and play only when you get stuck or you want to check your work. So draw the products that would result from the oxidation of each type of the following alcohol with, for example, potassium permanganate. So the key word there in that, sorry, I should have prepped this before, is oxidation. Because we have a lot of different kinds of reactions that we've looked at. Um, hydration, dehydration, uh, uh, addition, substitution, elimination. We have overlapping ones. So we want to make sure that we're working on not getting all of those confused. So make sure like, okay, oxidation and kind of get going with that. Um, you don't need to be able to write the chemical formula or anything for potassium permanganate, but if it didn't say oxidation, I would want my brain to be able to recognize that as a common oxidizer. So let's first, let's start by drawing our structure. Cyclo, that's a keyword I forget a lot, so I know I'm not drawing a linear thing. I'm going to draw a line formula of a cyclopentane structure, and on any carbon, it doesn't matter which one I pick, I'm going to add a hydroxyl group. So now I have, I've drawn cyclopentanol. So if I'm reacting this, and I don't need to draw the reaction, that's not what it's asking for, it's asking, asking me to draw the product, but to go ahead and say like, okay, so it's gonna react with an oxidizing agent, say for example, potassium permanganate, what's gonna happen? So one of the things in your study, and you might be able to go like, okay, so I remember that in oxidation, we can make an aldehyde from an alcohol, a ketone, but we can also have no reaction depending on whether we are dealing with a primary, a secondary, or a tertiary. So, and this is, this is something that you just have to kind of, you know, study your material enough to, to be able to have your brain be triggered by this to go, to go this route. So one of the first things I want to do here is I want to consider what, I want to cla classify my alcohol. So with a line formula, remember our hydrogens are implied. So let's go ahead and put in just some of our hydrogens. We don't necessarily have to put them all in, but I have two there. You know, I have two here. I have two on all of these. And then right here, this carbon, which we would call our carbonyl carbon, it has one. So in light of that, I'm going to identify my carbonyl carbon. My carbonyl carbon is attached to one alkyl group on this side and one alkyl group on this side, which seems a little weird because it loops back around, but it's technically two alkyl groups. So that makes this a secondary carbon. Now this can really help me because then I can go right away, I should be making a ketone. And the ketone, you might remember their general structure is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and it has an alkyl group on either side. So that can be a help. Now I like to also then just kind of consider what the reaction looks like. So when we get an oxidation reaction and, and we're going to have a loss of hydrogen to recognize that, that, that loss of electrons can be, can be tracked in these organic molecules, sometimes through a gain of oxygen or a loss of hydrogen. So in this case, it's going to be a loss of hydrogen. So What's going to happen here is this hydrogen is going to leave, this oxygen is going to leave, and they actually are going to react with some oxygens in the oxidizing agent. We do get water as a product, but that's we're not really worrying too much about the reaction on a whole. But in doing that, I'm going to close the drawbridge. This hydrogen, the, the oxygen, you know, there was two electrons here, but hydrogen is going to take it. This Electron is going to come down here, and this shared electron is going to go there, and that's going to close that from a from being a single bond between the carbon and the oxygen. They're going to go on, go ahead and share an additional pair through this loss. So this hydrogen leaves, and this hydrogen leaves. So let's think about then what that final structure is going to be. I'm get my cyclopentane drawn, and then on that same carbon, what was my carbonyl carbon? I now have a double bond to the oxygen instead. And if you consider it, I, I, I've lost some hydrogen atoms that leave then as a water molecule. So look at how this does have that formula of a ketone. I have a carbon double bonded to an oxygen and on either side, an alkyl group. So this made a ketone because you can oxidize a secondary alcohol to a ketone. So let's look, take a look then at B, 2-methyl-2-propanol. So I'm going to start with my prop. So 
Maybe I'll do structural formulas this time. So I have three carbons, because prop means three. And I can see I have my hydroxyl group is on the second carbon. So I'm going to do that. Two, the two applies to the OL. So that's where I got my, knew it was on that middle carbon. But on that middle carbon, I also have a methyl group. I'm going to go ahead and condense that for simplicity. And I'm going to fill in the rest because when you're doing a condensed formula, you don't get to imply hydrogens. You could condense them, you know, do a CH3 here and a CH3 there. But I'm going to go ahead and expand it. You don't get to leave it blank, though, and uh, apply, imply, sorry, not apply, imply hydrogens. Hydrogens are implied in line formulas. Okay, so let's start then with taking a look at our carbonyl carbon. Here's our carbonyl carbon right here. And I look, when I look to the left and right, I say one carbon, two carbons, and it's also attached to this carbon through the methyl group. So my carbonyl carbon is attached to one, two, three. So that makes this a tertiary. So in that case, we are not going to get a product at all. If you take this, this 2-methyl-2 two two propanol, and you add the potassium permanganate, which happens to be kind of a purple color, it's just going to turn purple and do nothing. It's going to be no reaction. Those are sometimes our favorite for these kinds of problems because you don't have to do anything. Now, you can, there, some people, not their favorite because they're easy to get kind of trapped down trying to, trying to do that. Now, why do they have no reaction? Why can they not be oxidized? Why does the solution stay purple instead of turning purple when you add the purple substance and then either turning a different color? Why do we not see evidence of a chemical change? Well, it has to do with the fact that we actually, in order for this to be oxidized, we have to have a hydrogen on our carbonyl carbon. And since we don't have one, the, the movement of electrons that we need for this to happen can't. So it requires that. So no hydrogen here means no oxidation. Now that doesn't mean we couldn't do some other chemical reactions to this, but we cannot oxidize it. We recognize, you know, we need to lose hydrogens for this to happen and we don't have any here. And these hydrogens are just held too tightly and this hydrogen um, leaving doesn't, doesn't give any room for the carbon because the carbon's already full and stable. So no reaction, those are my faves. All right, C, 3-phenyl-1-octanol. So let's start. This is a good review for some Chapter um, 11 content. So we're going to start with the oct. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to do line formulas because eight's a lot. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like to double check. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I like to double check because I have a tendency to forget to count when I first put my pen down. So I'll sometimes count this as one, but technically that's carbon two. So I've got my eight. That's my eight. And then on, on my first carbon, I have an OH group. So that's what that one. So it doesn't matter which side. I don't know why, but I have a tendency to like to go over here. So that's going to be carbon one. So carbon one has a hydroxyl group. And then look at what carbon three has. It has a phenyl. Notice that Y. Sometimes I even emphasize it. Phenyl. So what does that mean? So carbon one, carbon two, carbon three. It means that it has a benzene ring substituent. So I'm going to uh, put that off on carbon three. So three phenyl, one octanol. So we're, let's classify this. What kind of organic alcohol is this? So we have, here's our carbonyl carbon, and it is attached to one carbon group here. And what's it attached to over here? Well, it's attached to two hydrogens, right? Let's go ahead and write them in just for simplicity, because we're going to want to keep track of them later anyway. So if it's attached, if our carbonyl carbon is attached to one, that makes it a primary alcohol. So we've already discussed then that a primary alcohol can oxidize to an aldehyde, so I assume I'm going to get an aldehyde here. But let's go ahead and talk about then how that happens. So we know that the hydrogen is going to go from the hydroxyl group, and the hydrogen from the carbonyl group, since I have them, I know that I, I can have a positive reaction. So in that case, what would happen is we'd put in the purple potassium permanganate, and then when we stir it, it would keep disappearing, and it would keep disappearing. And that would, that would reflect the oxidation happening of this reaction, the loss of electrons. So when these leave as, you know, and they leave as water, 
and they react with an oxygen. And they leave what we're going to end up with. Whoops. See, that's why I got to recount them. I counted too many times that one. Let's reset. So, I'm, nothing happens to my uh, phenyl group here. One, two, three. It's not involved in the chemical reaction. You guys will remember that they're, they're very stable structures. I'm not going to have the best uh, benzene ring here. What I'm going to have here is a double bond. Um, and that hydrogen is implied. Sometimes uh, I like to go ahead and write it just because it to draw my attention to it, but you could leave it that way or not. Um, and I created then an aldehyde from my original alcohol with my primary. Now, aldehydes actually can also undergo oxidation. So if we, if the question at, wanted us to continue, if we continue to add potassium permanganate, we're actually going to be able to oxidize this product into a carboxylic acid. I'm gonna say carboxylic acid. Sorry, I'm gonna be lazy and not write out the whole word. And really, it's actually gonna end up, if I was asked to do that, it would look just like this structure I'm going to run out of room here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It would have that double bond there. It would have one, two, three. Yep. I'm going to be really lazy and do that. Don't do that, guys. I'm just being lazy. Um, and then instead, it would have a hydroxyl group in replace of that hydrogen. So you can actually also um, out, out, oxidize an aldehyde. So there are three more oxidation problems. One of the things you really want to remember when you are doing your practice, this is important enough, I'm going to write it. Mix them up. <laughs> so one of the things is you'll notice we did oxidation for all three of these problems. It told us right here we were going to do oxidation. That's not how most tests and quizzes work. The problems are all mixed up where you do an oxidation and then you do a dehydration and then you do a preparation. So make sure as you're studying that you're practicing problems in a way that makes you do the same thing with your brain that you're going to have to do on a test or quiz, which is figure out what kind of problem it is in the first place. One of the, one of the, biggest mistakes I think we make studying besides just studying too passively is studying with all these hints and triggers that we're not going to have on the test or exam. So um, if you're studying and you're all like you do a, you do a page and it's all titration problems for example and then you go and study and you do all oxidation and then you go and do another worksheet and it's all what you know whatever the other topic is there's a little bit of a hint you have you already know when you pick the page up what kind of problems it's so make sure that you practice in as similar of the way to testing as you're going to so make sure you're mixing up your problems it does feel a little bit more frustrating to have to switch between topic but that's actually the point you want to frustrate your brain in order to convince it that converting this learning to long-term memory is worth the work so if studying feels easy, it might not be being very effective. So mix up your problems um, as much as you can. Keep your guys' questions coming.